Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Rosalind, America's editor at PV Magazine, and I'm joined by Dan Burdar, the CEO of Ideal Power Converters. Dan, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. Thanks, Christian. I appreciate it. So, Dan, Ideal Power Converters has a product and has a technology that at times it's difficult to describe. This is a power conversion technology, but it's not an inverter per se. This is based on a fundamentally different technology, uh, different approach and different architecture. Can you explain what it is that makes all of this uh, so interesting and, and how this is different? Yeah, happy to. What Ideal Power has come up with is a brand new way to do power conversion that is very different than conventional power converters. What you have is a technology that is highly patented in terms of the technology itself. It allows you to get the electrical isolation that you would find in a conventional power converter that uses big bulky transformers, but you end up with a product that is about a fifth the size and weight of a conventional power converter, tends to be the same or more efficient, and is also a truly software-enabled device. So rather than make different product designs for a 60 hertz market like the US or a 50 hertz market like Europe, it's all done through firmware. Interesting. Now I understand there are some distinct other technical advantages to this, such as the ability to go not only DC to AC, but back AC to DC, and this is why uh, Ideal Power Converters products are so important for energy storage. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, it is a truly a bi-directional technology, so anything that's going to use storage, whether it's standalone storage for demand charge management, the combination of solar and storage, or microgrids, where you need to cycle power both to charge and discharge the batteries, you want to do that hopefully with one power converter rather than having to use multiple devices the way it's done today, and you want to do that as efficiently as possible. And what we've seen from third-party testing is the unique attributes of our technology mean that round-trip efficiency for things like batteries ends up being eight to 10 percentage points higher with our technology versus a conventional power converter. That means a lot more useful life out of the same size batteries. Additionally, isn't there the advantage of isolating without a transformer? Yes, and that is a significant factor because we actually can provide the isolation without the use of a big bulky conventional transformer, and those transformers typically add a lot of size and weight to a conventional power converter. So if you think about where storage might be located in the, in the coming years, urban areas where you've got to get it inside the buildings, the size and weight becomes pretty important because you typically are going to have to fit it into an existing mechanical room, and you want to have as small a footprint as possible to do that. Now, for those of our viewers who aren't quite as technically savvy, why is this isolation necessary for energy storage? Well, it's important because you want to make sure that you don't have energy flowing back the wrong direction. Um, and on a battery, unfortunately, it does require complete isolation because you've got to be able to both charge and discharge. And you don't want to have energy going the wrong direction in that process. Very interesting. Now, let's take this for a moment and move over to markets. Obviously, this is a product that is intended for commercial and industrial applications and is perfect for energy storage given its truly bidirectional nature. What do you see going on right now for commercial and industrial energy storage markets in the United States? Well, the market's really being led by California. And what's happened is, as a result of the success of solar, the utilities have put in place demand charges. And they have gotten to the point where, for an average customer in California, they can be more than half of the bill. The way to solve that, obviously, is to put in a storage system to take care of those peak needs for the commercial and industrial customer. When we look more broadly, we see places like New York that have high time of use charges, and we see this declining cost of batteries and increasing demand charges all around the country, so that over the next couple of years, you're going to see many states in the U.S. have a need for a solution where you can use batteries to mitigate demand charge management. So you're truly not just solving a problem, but is a real financial driver to put a system in versus just wanting to be green or have a green policy. Now, we hear a fair amount about California and New York, obviously because of these policies, AB 2514, the rev process. What other markets do you see, state markets do you see as particularly interesting for CNI storage? Um, interestingly, we see places like Michigan, we see Massachusetts, we see Kentucky, places that most people wouldn't think of uh, for a lot of these markets that because of their own uh, you know, electricity profiles and demand charges, the economics are already working in those places. And that'll grow pretty quickly. Very interesting. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me, Dan. My pleasure. Thank you. And this is PV Magazine Live. We're at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas.